if you don't raise your children the way God intends them to be raised. If you raise your boys and girls the same, if you raise your boys right? If you raise your boys like girls or you raise your girls like boys and you don't show them the distinction and the difference, right? If Christians follow these same principles, they're going to teach their children the same way. More than ever, do our children need to see consistent biblical roles lived out. They need to see a father that is the head of the wife and the head of the family. They need to see a mother that is not a co-equal or partner with him, but is his helpmeet and his wife that she follows. They need to see feminine, God-fearing, modest women. They need to see masculine, strong men that lead with the scriptures. They need to see a man as a leader and a woman as a follower. They don't need to see loudmouth Jezebel women. Christian homes must have women that are modest. Shame-faced with sobriety. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first form, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Ephesians 5. I'll tell you what, husbands, you know, here's the thing. Pastors don't want to preach on the roles. That's why you have so many, that's why you have so many families that are destroyed out there, come from Christian homes, and they wonder why their children don't make it. And their children grow up and change their, their religious affiliation, so to speak which means they were never converted by the Spirit of God and by the power of God. And the examples that they had in front of them were horrible examples, inconsistent with the faith. Or they're just rebellious children. That could be it too. Right? The Bible says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as is under the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he may present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. But we got so many men today that just send their wives to work to go make money for some other man. Right? We send them send the wife send wives and send our daughters to colleges and to careers and everything else. Right? Christians not knowing the roles of the sexes, not knowing what God is, has said were the, were, the, were the roles of the sexes. So we're just like the world, a blasphemy. Right? The Bible says, 
For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. See the difference there? The husband's to love his wife, and the wife is to reverence the husband. That reverence. By the way, that reverence is 13 times in the King James Bible. You know what that reverence means? Love. Respect. Reverence. See that she reverence. Let's see. First Peter three six, for after this manner, actually, likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of the plating of the hair, or the wearing of gold, or the putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in old time the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection to their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as you do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Yeah, Jody, you don't have a husband. You have to work. That's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. You don't have a choice. You got to take care of yourself. There isn't a husband to take care of you. That's the way it goes. And by the way, I tell every woman in this, I have women in this church that have to work. They don't have husbands. They don't have fathers to take care of them. They have to work. Right? So I tell every woman that's in this the same exact thing. Right? There's no choice. Maybe someday the Lord will give you a husband that will take care of you. Right? But until then, that's what you have to do. I'm talking about... I'm talking about... Men, Christian men that send their wives to work and that won't work hard enough themselves. Right? That a man won't take care of them. Direct verses, it's called being a keeper at home, that the word of God be not blasphemed. You want to see it? I'll show it to you. Bible says uh, to be discreet, chaste, 
Keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. To their own husbands, being home, being su- surrendered to their husband and him taking care of them, of her. That's what the Bible says. To her own husband, right? To their own husband, not to another. Not to another man, but surrendered to their own husband. Very clear. Husbands are to love their wives. Husbands are to be providers. Husbands are to take care of their wives and take care of their children. While the wife is at home. And if a man is married and won't do that, then he's causing the word of God to be blasphemed. Right? That's what he's doing. And that's what she's doing. Causing the word of God to be blasphemed. So, um, that's, that's, uh, that's scripture right there. That's the Bible. That's what God's word says. But if you don't have a husband, that's the way it is. Right? That's right. First Timothy 5, 14, I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. You know why? The Bible warns of it. Verse 13, and with all they learn to be idle. Wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers, also in busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. That's what women do when they're not busy at home doing the things that they're supposed to be doing. I will therefore the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully, for some are already turned aside after Satan. That's the example of the scriptures. That's how God made that. That goes back to the garden. Eve would take care of the children. Adam would till the ground. Eve would be in the home. Right? Eve would be in the home. Right? Right? Adam would be out in the world. He would work in the world. He would toil in the world. He would labor in the world. That's what he would do. She would be in the home. She would guide the children. She would raise them. She would guide the home. Put all her heart and mind and and uh, affections into her husband and in her home. That's what she would do. Right? That's exactly what would happen. But today you have rebellion to that. Today you have Christians rebelling against that. Or Christians that don't know what the Bible says about the order of the sexes. About the roles of the husband and the wife. About the roles of the father and the mother. They're totally ignorant of it. And it looks exactly like Will Smith's marriage. That's the real slap to the face if you really want to know the truth of it. Right? That's the real slap, isn't it? 
Because what it teaches and what it shows is rebellion to God's order. Rebellion to what um rebellion to what God says in his word. Somebody said, I have heard that the cost of living has skyrocketed, that a woman has no choice but to go out to work to support her husband as she doesn't earn enough. As he doesn't earn enough. Well, then maybe he should work harder and have less. Because that's not true. Because I have a church full of men that work. I have a church full of men that work. I, there's 10 men in this church and every single one of them work. At least 10 men, more than that. But every single one of them work and every single one of them make a living and all of their wives are at home and none of them are in the world working and all of them are at home taking care of their children. All of them. Every single one of them. Every single one of them. It's called being a man. It's called manning up and doing what's necessary to take care of your family. That's what men do. They don't send their wives out to do it for them. Just like I can't be a mother to my children. I can't be their mother. I can't. I can't do what their mother does. I cannot guide the home like like she can. I cannot raise the children like she she's been gifted to. Why? Because God uniquely fit her to do that. I I can't do that. Right? I can't. So I do what God's called me to do, and she does what God's call, God called her to do. That's how it works. That's Bible. And by the way, God's way works. God's way absolutely works. And if you think it doesn't, then you don't have faith. You don't have faith. Because it takes faith to have your wife come home and fulfill the role that God has for her. Right? That takes faith. That takes faith. You believe God. Every man in this church has done that. When they came to this church, not every man, some of them didn't have their wives working, but some of them did. They learned the truth from the scriptures. They saw it from the Bible. It was preached from the Bible. They learned it and they obeyed it and God blessed them. There isn't one man in this church that God hasn't blessed his obedience in that issue. Their children are blessed. Their children are blessed. Their families are blessed. Right? Why is that? Because of obedience to the Lord. That's why. God blesses obedience, and he blesses his way. And your children, your home will be blessed when you follow the Lord. Instead of the mockery of this marriage of Will Smith and, and, and Jada and their, and their dysfunctional family, Hollywood family.